He claims, Steve Sislak in that clip, I know we didn't show it all, but he said that he has been begging for PPE and that he has gotten nowhere, claiming that the president has not done anything that he's promised and has not responded or helped. Well, I want to nix the narrative. I want to give you the truth right now. Here, here's the truth. We do not have a shortage of PPE in Nevada right now. Here's the proof. The Nevada Independent, the Nevada Independent, John Ralston's newspaper, one of the most liberal pundits in uh, the entire state, he reported on June 3rd that the state has $50 million to spend on PP&E to create a COVID stockpile. We are not talking about providing for the hospitals right now. No, this is a stockpile in case the pandemic ever ramps up again and we need a lot more PPE. So they're creating a $50 million stockpile. Stockpile. Plus, it was mandated at that time that all hospitals had to have at least a two-week supply on hand of PPE outside, outside of the state stockpile. Then get this, you go to the COVID-19 task force webpage and they will tell you exactly how much we have of absolutely everything. Did you know that we have in a stockpile 70,095 masks? Did you know that we have in a stockpile 3.1 million surgical masks? That we have 207,824 face shields? All of that available at our disposal. So in that clip, Governor Sisolak sat there and said, oh no, the president's not doing anything. They're not helping us at all. But that is a lie. And that is the fact. Now, did you see Aaron Burnett clap back? Did you see Aaron Burnett or any media here in the state of Nevada clap back to that and tell the truth? Absolutely not. We did not. What do you think about this? Do you have any thoughts on Steve Sisolak? 702-221-7283. That is the number for you to call. Did you also know, uh, so Sisolak went on to go in that clip. I don't know why it didn't play all the way, but it went on to go in that clip to say that we don't have enough tests. Oh, let's nix the narrative right now. Do you know that Governor Sisolak requested for 60,000 tests for the state of Nevada? And we got them. Dr. Burks made that happen. And if you're wondering why you get a text message almost every day asking you to go get tested because we have free testing, it's because no one's getting tested because no one is really sick. That's right. We have over 60,000 tests available and we probably will not even be able to use them all. So far, so far, we've done close to a million tests this year just in Nevada. 959,839 tests have been done in Nevada so far. That's a third of our population, my friends. Nationwide, we've done over 100 million tests. So while Steve Sisolak used that opportunity on CNN to say the president's done nothing and to attack him and to say, oh, there was so much more that could be done. Well, that certainly wasn't true. But obviously, we know now that the Democrats' MO is to do one thing and one thing only, and that is to discredit the president. I'm going to I'm going to turn here for a minute, because if any of you saw on CNN last night, uh, Joe Biden had a town hall with Anderson Cooper on that town hall. Absolutely ridiculous. Biden made the claim, the ridiculous claim that if the president had acted sooner, there would be no deaths. There would be no deaths. All the people wouldn't have died. All of the people would not have died. That is what Joe Biden said with Anderson Cooper on a CNN town hall yesterday. He said, the data, the data, the data proves it. Well, guess what, my friends? The data does not prove that at all. Joe Biden was using hyperbole. Joe Biden was making something up out of the thin blue sky. There was no data to support it whatsoever. Did Anderson Cooper clap back? No. Did any of the Democrats in the audience, because the audience was loaded with Democrats, ask questions? No, not a one of them clapped back. No one clapped back until today. Thank goodness for the Washington Post and several other media outlets who said that's just ridiculous. We all know every time the president uses hyperbole, everyone freaks out. Evidently, Joe Biden can do it without any issue whatsoever. Now let's play Sisolak video three. This is an interesting video because it's with Aaron Burnett on CNN once again. And on this video or the next video, Sisolak two, I'm sorry, Sisolak two, women talks to, about Sisolak stopping the protest. So that's the second video, Spencer. My apologies there in the order. It's someone who was at the rally in Nevada saying that she is mad that Sisolak has not taken her seriously. And then the governor goes on to tell us what he actually thinks of the folks who went to the peaceful protest rally. Let's play that video now if we can, Spence.
We're going to hear from a woman who was on CNN who's saying what she thinks about. Here we go. Yeah, it doesn't seem to stop any of the protests, but he tried to put up a roadblock for this to occur. It's not right. So what do you say to that, to, to his supporters who, who think you were somehow trying to prevent him from holding any type of event in your state? We had no input on his rallies. You know, he knows what the rules are, the same as everybody else knows what the rules are. Uh, thank goodness most people have chosen to follow the rules and comply with what the rules are. As he's comparing this to a protest, he's like a little kid saying, so-and-so did it, so I can do it too. I wish that there, we didn't have large gatherings anywhere, whether they're on the Las Vegas Strip or it's a protest or it's at one of his rallies. When people are together, medical science shows us that disease is transmitted. The justification of it's okay that I did it because somebody else did it, that, that just doesn't make any sense. He's the president of the United States. He should be an example for everybody, not play to the least lowest common denominator. Okay. Let's go over that one because that one is pretty huge, if I do say so myself. All right. So what did he say? He basically said the president was acting like a child, like the rules did not apply to him, that the president needs to be a better example, and that those of us who attended the rally, well, we're the lowest common denominator. Did you catch that? That's what he called us. The lowest common denominator. Let's talk about this for a minute. Number one, I do believe the president needs to be an example for all, and he is being an example for all because he is showing that First Amendment rights matter, that the freedom of speech, that the freedom to assemble, that the freedom to wear a mask or not to wear a mask is all on you as an individual and not to be government mandated. You know, uh, Biden had to backtrack just the other day uh, because Biden said, oh, if I'm president, I'm going to make a national mask mandate. And then just yesterday, he had to say, oops, my bad. Guess I can't do that. It violates it's the 10th Amendment. Exactly. Our president is showing that he is supporting First Amendment rights. He said, though, that we are the lowest common denominator. He said basically that we're simple, that we're not that smart, that we're the lowest common denominator because we would choose to use our First Amendment rights to maybe not wear a mask at the rally or to maybe attend the rally or to be with other people indoors. We're the lowest common denominator. Now, that's very interesting. That's that's what he thinks because we're going to play another video here in a minute. So Spencer, get the next video ready because in June of this year, Sisolak went on ad nauseum about how he supports the First Amendment, how he supports first responders, how he supports uh, people using their First Amendment rights, and how he thanked BLM protesters for being in our city and for protesting and for using their voices. But conservatives... They're the lowest common denominator. Spence, let's play that video if we can. Here's what I can commit to you. I will no longer be party to a system that dictates how minority communities should express their First Amendment right to protest or their human right to grieve. For those who will be out on our streets asking to be seen and to be heard, I thank you. For those of you in Las Vegas, Volunteers from our legal community will be present to observe your events. They will be wearing red t-shirts that say legal observer on them. They can help. They can help you to understand your rights and what conduct is lawful. But as you protest, know that I see you and I'm listening. Please be safe out there. Here's what I can commit to you. I will no longer be party to a system that dictates how minority communities should express their First Amendment right to protest or their human right to grieve. For those who will be out on our streets asking to be seen and to be heard, I thank you. For those of you in Las Vegas, volunteers from our legal community will be present to observe your events. They will be wearing red t-shirts that say legal observer on them. They can help. They can help you to understand your rights and what conduct is lawful. But as you protest, know that I see you and I'm listening. Please be safe out there. 
All right. So I know our Instagram viewers are having some trouble hearing the video, but everyone else heard exactly what he said. He started out by saying, you know what? I am not going to dictate. That's what he said. I am not going to dictate how people express the First Amendment. That's very interesting. So when it came to BLM protesters, he wasn't going to express, he wasn't going to dictate how they express the First Amendment. But when Republicans want to get together to support the president, he's going to do it. Then he gave them legal observers to know that their protests were safe. He said, I see you. And he thanked them. He literally thanked them for protesting. But he didn't thank any of us. No, no. He went after us. He went after Douglas County and said, hey, I'm going to take away COVID funding from you because you hosted the president there over in Minden. How ridiculous. This guy is out of control and no one in the media is clapping back and it's up to you and me to do it. All right. That music is playing, which means I have got to take a break, but I want you to stay with us because we are going to talk to Jeff Harmon, the political astrologist in the next break. We're going to get some predictions about the election. You are not going to want to miss that one iota plus we've got our giveaway and the best and the worst of the week coming up at the bottom of the hour we will see you here soon stay with us thanks for being here on the michelle mortensen show You're gonna be my new one. Can that astrology